All right, so I'm going to go into the GLM learning module and then go into the lab on creating models with GLMs. Um, and I also have R open here in the background. So this first block of code creates a data frame uh, with a binomial or binary distribution, something similar to presence absence. And all I'm going to do is run that so I have that function. Okay. And this is going to create synthetic data, which I think you guys know I like doing, especially when I'm evaluating new modeling methods. I'm going to go ahead and call that function to generate a uh, data frame that has 100 entries in it. So if we go ahead and run that, over here we get our data frame. Go here and you can see we've got x's and y's and then our measures. And our measures should go from 0 to 1. So there's our presence absence or binomial data. Now we can go ahead and plot that by just plotting the x's against the measures. And there we go. You can see that we've got zeros down here at 0 and 1's up here uh, at high values for independent variable. You could think of this as being precipitation and this would be the occurrence of Doug fir trees in plots, which I'll show you in just a little bit. All right, so what we want to do is build a model of that. To build that model, we're going to run GLM2. Now, um, this should look familiar from linear regression. Same format for this. We're going to say we're going to uh, model the measures. That's our Y. And there's our tilde to model that against our independent variable or one of our X's. There's our data, and we do need to say family is binomial to pick which GLM model we're going to use. The function and library we're using is GLM2. So up here we need to include that as a library. And I always put these up at the top so that later on I can just select the whole file and run it. Now if you run that and you get an error, it's because you don't have GLM2 installed. You can just go to Tools, Install Packages, type in GLM, whoop, GLM2, and then go ahead and install it which I've done before. Okay, so um, easy to run the model. We just hit run on that one line and then we can dump a summary and there's our AIC value, 39. Um, there's a bunch of other information that I'm not going to cover in detail here. There's uh, information on the website. Feel free to go there, peruse it, ask me questions if you've got questions about it. But the AIC is really what we're going to focus on, especially uh, this week and the next couple weeks. But we might want to plot our model. Let's see what it looks like. Well, when you plot these models, um, <clears throat> oops, you get some strange things. First, you get this pop-up down here that says hit enter to see the next plot. And it gives you residuals versus fitted, which um, is not really what we want to see for this model because our residuals are not going to be normally distributed and we wouldn't expect them to be. Um, I'll show you what's going on with that in a minute. So, um, and again, normal QQ isn't going to work. Uh, so this is kind of interesting that it does this. Anyway, uh, <laughs> there's more explanation about that on the website. Um, what we really want to do is we want to see the model, okay? But first, let's take a look at the residuals. So I want to show you that here are the residuals. Um, there they are. And then we can histogram those. And you might think they're looking normal, and they are. They're approximating normal distribution, which is not a bad thing. Okay, that's all right. Um, and they should do that. And we also see we're not getting some, you know, crazy values out here, negative 100 or something, um, that would cause us to worry about our model. So that's not a bad thing to do. But what we really want to do is we want to see the model. So for that, we can say fitted, and then we can plot the fitted values. In other words, that's how we can view the actual model. So this is the actual logistic model, the regression that's been fit to our data. Okay, and that's how you can see it. Now you may already see the problem with the residuals, but let's go ahead and do a prediction as well so we can match this uh, to our data. All right, so first we need to go ahead and make a prediction. And I can do that here with this code. Now take a look. <clears throat> what we're doing is we're creating a sequence from 1 to 100. So we're going to cover the entire range of our independent variable. We're going to create an array from that and then we're going to use the array to create an R vector. 
Um, now, earlier I'd use these terms kind of interchangeably, but notice that these are specific structures inside of R, so we need to be a little more careful about that. This is an array, and then we convert that to a vector. And then we create a data frame. Data frames are built from vectors. So each of the columns in the data frame would be a vector. All right, so we're going to create that data frame. And here's our new data frame. It just has one column of x's. Yay! Okay, and then from that, we can use that new data with our existing model to do a prediction. We do need to tell it that the type of prediction we want is the response. So we're looking for the response variable or the dependent variable. Run that, we get our prediction. Now we can go ahead and plot our existing field data, and then we can plot our model on top of that. Okay, so this is how you're able to do a prediction with a new data set, which is good for visualization. It's also what you're going to need to do when you go to do a prediction over your entire site. So this is data for California. If we wanted to do all of California, instead of doing this, I would bring in a data frame that had pixels for all of California with the same values and important to note, the same um, names uh, for our data. Whoops, I don't have real data yet, so I'll show you that in a second. Um, okay, and then That's it on that. All right, so um, again, there's more information on the website. Check it out, including how to run different GLMs. Um, but down here, we have an example of how to run this with a real data set, start to finish. Again, I'm gonna go into R, do a new script, clean things out. Nice clean space to work in. Okay, I'm gonna load my library. And then I read my data. Well, of course, I have my data in a different place, so I've got to fix that. Here's my actual data. I'm going to go ahead and shift, right click, copy as path, paste that in, go ahead and flip the backslashes to forward slashes. Okay, now we should be able to run that line and read our data in. And there's our data. And now you can see we've got X and Y's for locations of the plots, height of trees in the plots, and then a number of different uh, covariates or independent variables to work with. And over here we have presence. I basically converted the height values to be present. So there's zero or ones, uh, one based on height greater than zero, zero otherwise. So we now have a binary or binomial uh, set of data, presence, absence. We need to go ahead and run naomit to get rid of any cells that R will complain about. And then we can go and plot that. Now, I went ahead and plotted this because um, R really should have given us an error. There is no pres abs column in this data set. So, um, one of the tricks with R is you can type the name of your data set and then do a dollar sign. It will show you what's in your columns and you can then click on the correct one, but be careful because it didn't give us an error that time and it doesn't always, sometimes it just does strange things. Notice there is no pres abs in this data set, there is present. So I think it just went ahead and plotted the precipitation data um, against an index, which is kind of annoying. Uh, <laughs> anyway, and we'll need to fix that throughout this example as you'll need to fix it to work with your uh, both independent and dependent variables, okay? And here's our GLM equation, again, feeding it the data, asking for a binomial. We go and run that. Doesn't do much, except when we do a summary, we get to see our AICs, as well as the other information here with degrees of freedom and deviance. Okay. Um, all right. So now we can create a new data frame for the prediction. So again, for the assignment, you'll want to do this for your whole study area and bring it in as another data frame. Here I'm just going to crank out some annual precipitation values from 1 to 2,000 or over the entire range of values um, so that I can illustrate this. I'm going to create a new data frame from that and then do a prediction as we did before with the model, with the new data, asking for a response. Okay, and that gives us our prediction here. And now we can go ahead and <clears throat> whoops, try to plant 
plot pres abs, which won't work. So let's plot that. There we go. There's our data. So notice more, it's, it's definitely shifted over based on precipitation, but not perfect because it's real data. And then we can then put our prediction on top of that. So there's our logistic regression with a real data set. <clears throat> Excuse me. Now, um, the next thing I'm going to do, so, so for your assignment, you're going to go ahead and do this with your entire study area. Um, go ahead and run this um, prediction. And then you're going to put the prediction back into the existing data frame, save it out, bring it over into ArcGIS or another GIS package to create your maps. Um, here, I'm going to go ahead and just show you a prediction run against the original model itself. And then I can put that into um, the original data frame and I can go ahead and plot that out. So there's a prediction against the original data, uh, what it should be, and then I'm going to save that out. So what you're going to do is a little different, um, but this is most of it covered for you.